Hello, everybody. So welcome back. Hopefully you are all enjoying your time off. It is a beautiful uh, holiday break we're on right now. I don't know exactly what the weather is doing uh, for you guys right now, but for me, I am in school on a Tuesday afternoon. It is partly sunny out. I look out across the courtyard and I see a little bit of sun and some closed windows. So yeah, could be worse, could be raining, but that's not why you're here. You're not here to learn about weather. You are here to learn about chemistry. And whether you like it or not, chemistry is what we're gonna learn about. So we left off in class talking a little bit about precipitation reactions or precipitants or precipitates, depending on how you say them. Uh, it is when we take a reaction, we react two liquids. Um, usually for a greater effect, we take two clear liquids, we mix them together. When they mix, they then react to form a new substance. That new substance, as you can see in the picture over yonder, down over there. Oh, oh, oh dude, let me let me bring myself up. Do, 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 do. Walking over, walking over. It's right there. So that precipitant or precipitate is now a new chemical that has reacted and is no longer soluble in water. Okay, which means it will not dissolve, it will not disassociate, it becomes a solid, it's now a solid. If you were to write it in a chemical reaction, it gets a little S for solid, it's not a G for gas, it's not an L for liquid, it is not aqueous for dissolved in solution, it is a solid, okay? We talked about solubility over summer, you still have your packets, you have the solubility rules, the solubility rules are also in your book, just go into the index, search up a solubility table, and you'll find them. You can even type it in the internet, you'll find a whole bunch of them, I promise you. Uh, but this is a precipitant reaction, okay? If we continue to move on, let's see. Oh, I think I might disappear for a quick second here, but I'll be right back. Oh, can you still hear me? Yeah, I'm right here, everybody. So I think what I might have to do, excuse me for these technical difficulties. We are moving and grooving like so. Like so, very good. And then we'll bring this guy back and we'll throw him over here and look at that. Hey, there we are, everybody. All right. So precipitant reactions or reactions where precipitates form two solutions containing soluble salts. Now these salts have disassociated, they've broken down, okay? They've separated. Their ions have completely broken apart. Take for example, salt, right? Just, just to think about it, the sodium has separated, the chloride has separated. So now you got positive sodium floating around, negative chloride floating around, and they're waiting to link up with something from the other reactant. Okay, the other liquid that's coming in here. In this case, you have two liquids. You have a lead nitrate solution. You could see that with the PB2 plus and the NO3 minus. And you have a potassium iodide solution. You see that from the potassium uh, cation and the iodide anion. Well, they've disassociated. They've broken apart in solution. We see that right down there. When we now mix them, they are going to start to um, pair up with the other. So lead and nitrate were together, but they're going to break up. And we're like, hey, yo, lead, it's not working out. Nitrate, I'm sorry, it's not you, it's me, right? So they break up. The lead being the positive cation is now going to seek out another, uh, excuse me, a negative anion. So it's going to be like nitrate, no way, uh-uh. But hey, I see iodide over there. What's up, iodide? So lead's going to walk over and go see iodide and link up with iodide. Now we're going to have lead to iodide. And then potassium's gonna be like, yo, iodide, you're not for me anymore. But it's gonna see nitrate over there just hanging out. So potassium's gonna be like, yo, nitrate, what's up? And now that will become potassium nitrate. And we see that because lead, when it combines, it precipitates out with iodide, it becomes insoluble, which now we have this, um, this solid crystalline lattice structure at the bottom separates out. We have our precipitant of lead to iodide. And we see uh, down in the reaction, you can see down there, uh, the last picture, you see two potassium nitrate aqueous plus lead to iodide. 
the potassium nitrate is still broken apart. It is aqueous, it's dissolved, but the lead to iodide has um, formed the solid and fallen out of solution. That's where we get a precipitant, the word precipitate from. It falls out of solution. I like that. Falls out, falls out. All right, hopefully you guys are enjoying this. I am trying my hardest to make your break as enjoyable as impossible. I know you're saying to yourself, well, Mr. F, if you want to make it enjoyable, why even bother assigning the work? Because if you don't already know this, I believe in you. I want the best for you guys. I know you are capable of so much. I know you guys will do great on this test. And I want you guys to keep on exercising your brains, studying hard with chemistry. And for that, let's move on to the next slide. Solution chemistry. So this is all about solution chemistry. It is basically chemistry, wet chemistry. It's all solutions. We're dealing with aqueous solutions, precipitants, um, uh, solvents and solutes, uh, concentrations, molarity. I know you know what molarity is. We've talked about that. And don't worry, you will see it again. It's a, remember, it's a type of concentration. It's always moles per liter. Moles per liter, that gives us molarity. We'll get to that plenty of time. Sorry, I've been itching nose. You guys are used to, uh, used to seeing the old mask. Uh, not anymore, not for this one. So it's helpful to pay attention to exactly what species are present in a reaction. Are we talking solid? Are we talking liquid? Are we talking gas, aqueous? Okay, is something precipitating out? Is something dissolving? Is it uh, disassociating? Is it breaking apart? Is it breaking apart into a cation and an anion? Or is, are the molecules separating from one another? but they're still retaining their covalent bonds. All things to keep in, keep in mind. If we were to understand reactivity, we must be aware that um, what exactly is changing, what is breaking apart. So that's important to keep in mind. And you will be able to look at a reaction and tell exactly what is breaking apart. Take, for example, this reaction right in front of us, uh, the, uh, the single replacement reaction, or well, I, I guess we can call it a double replacement reaction. There's many different names. Uh, you can all make fun of me, but a metathesis reaction or an exchange reaction. When I learned, when I was sitting in your seat uh, in chemistry, we called it a double replacement reaction. The reason we called it a double replacement reaction is because this, the silver came with the nitrate, AgNO3, right? Actually, correct, silver one nitrate, right? Silver one nitrate. The silver came with the nitrate and the potassium came with the chloride. Well, they went to the party, but then they switched. And now the silver is with the chloride and the potassium is with the nitrate. So it was a double replacement, right? They started out like this, but then they switched. And now they're like, you know, well, I, I guess be like that now. So it's a double, two replacements, okay? Um, transpose, right? We're flip-flopping and we're switching them. It appears as though the ions in the reacting compounds exchange or transpose. Um, seen in the equation below. I refer to it as a double replacement. You can call it whatever you want. You just have to be able to recognize it. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. The reason it might not be referred to as a double replacement and instead of as a, an exchange reaction is taking a look at the states of matter. If you see it's aqueous, aqueous, then solid aqueous. It means a precipitate is, is forming. So if we were to combine these liquids, we would get some solid that would fall out of solution. It would be silver one chloride. So that could be the only reason I would see as calling it something different than a double replacement, because you have that special precipitant, that solid being formed. Moving, moving, moving. Keep it on a moving. We're doing the next slide. Oh, okay. Anyway. All right, completing and balancing uh, metathesis reactions, metathesis, metathesis, we're gonna call it replacement reactions. Uh, you guys know how to balance chemical reactions, use the chemical formulas of the reactants. Remember reactants are on the left side of the arrow. Products are what's formed on the right side of the arrow. You determine which ions are present. You write the formulas for the products, cation from one reactant, the anion from the other, use the charges to write proper subscripts. Uh, crisscross, right? Check your solubility rules. Very important. When you're checking your solubility rules, let's go back to the previous slide. We're talking about, hopefully you guys can see my pointer here. We're, actually, I could change this. Uh, give me two seconds. Annotate. Do, 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 do. Spotlight. No. 
Yeah, I think I want the spotlight. All right. Yes, there we go. So when we talk about um, looking at your solubility table, we're specifically talking about aqueous, aqueous, solids, seeing if it's insoluble and aqueous. So you would look at your solubility table, you would see, hey, potassium nitrate, nitrates are soluble in liquid. So you get an aqueous, but you see silver, heavy metal is not, so it gets a solid. So that's what we're talking about in that case. Continuing to move on, um, check our solubility or precipitate forms and then balance the equation. I know you guys know how to balance equations. You're very good at that. Uh, ways to write these reactions. We have a molecular equation, the ionic equation. Notice it says complete. We'll get into that in just a second. And then the net ionic equation. Uh, we've written net ionic equations before. I don't know if you remember back, but we used to talk, or when we did an FRQ in the beginning of the year, we talked about net ionic equations and spectator ions and the ions that would cancel each other out on each side. Well, we got a little taste of it before. You sampled it on the buffet. Hey, you know, give me a little bit of that, a little bit of this. Now you're actually going to get a, a uh, academic teaching in molecular ionic and net ionic equations. So a molecular equation is what you're most familiar with. It uh, lists the reactant, reactants. It lists the products. It puts it in a very nice chemical equation, something that you would see in any textbook. Um, something when you think of chemistry, this is what you think of. Silver one nitrate in the aqueous form plus potassium chloride in the aqueous form react to form or yield the arrow, right? Silver one chloride, which precipitates out as a solid and potassium nitrate, which remains aqueous in solution. That is a molecular equation. The compounds are written as is. An ionic equation does just that. It now breaks the compounds down into their ions. Ionic equation, ions. Ionic equation, ions. And if I'm correct from our previous videos, there might be a mini me right up here. If there is, hey, God help you, there's two of me. If there's not, well, you could just say, that's fabs. Anyway, I digress. So an ionic equation is exactly just that. It is the equation written with the ions. So if I go back to the previous slide, sorry, wrong way. We see silver nitrate. You know that silver is a plus one. You know that nitrate is a minus one. So we write it just as that. We see the silver plus one and the nitrate minus one. Remember back, it was potassium chloride. Potassium plus one, chloride minus one, chlorine minus one, chloride minus one, right? And then on the other side, we have the potassium again as a plus one, the nitrate as a minus one. The sil wait a minute. Why is the silver chloride not written as ions? Well, the answer to that, the answer is right in here, but to get a better understanding, let's go back to the previous slide. What's the difference with silver chloride, silver one chloride. Take a look. I know you see it. And by now you've probably already said it. It's got an S, it's a solid, which means it has precipitated out. Because it's precipitated out, it does not disassociate into its ions. Everything else still does, it's aqueous, but not silver one chloride. For that reason, it is not written in its ionic form, but in its solid form. Silver chloride, silver one chloride. Okay. Now, this is the complete ionic equation. It shows all the ions disassociated and any insoluble solids are written as a unit. They do not disassociate. Silver chloride did not break apart. This now allows us to get to our net ionic equation. Because I'm sure looking at this, you see you have a silver on one side, but you have a silver chloride on the other. You have a chlorine on one side, but you have a silver chloride on the other. And you say, yeah, Mr. F, I know, I get that. But then you also see a nitrate on one side and a nitrate on the other. You have a potassium on one side and a potassium on the other. So when you have a two of the similar, two same things on either side of the arrow that allows you to cancel them out, okay? These are known as your spectator ions. I'll get to the slide right now. It is the net ionic equation. 
the net ionic equation. Notice we can now cancel out our nitrate and our potassium because they appear on both sides of the arrow. Right? They are not bonded with anything. They are just floating around. They started floating around in solution. They continue to float around in solution after the reaction is done. They serve no purpose but to spectate. They are spectator ions. The net ionic equation for this reaction would be silver aqueous, the silver cation aqueous, plus the chloride anion aqueous, yielding silver chloride solid. If you were writing those, that net ion equation, it would just be that. You would not include the nitrate or the potassium on either side. They are spectator ions. They cancel out. I believe that's everything I said. Blah, 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 blah. All right. So molecular, everything. As you would see in a chemical, the molecules written together. Ionic, break it all down unless there's something insoluble. That cannot be broken down. By definition, it's insoluble. Net ionic, find your spectator ions. They don't change from left side to right side, react at the product, cross them out, and you have your net ionic equation. Uh, there again is our net ionic equation. Write the balanced molecular, break it apart, uh, cross out anything that's similar on the left side and the right side. And in this case, our reaction would be silver, silver cation plus chloride cation, uh, anion gives us silver chloride. Yes, yes, I know, I know. 50 slides, we're into 20. 30 more to go, everybody. 30 more to go. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You're stuck with me for a year though, so hopefully it's entertaining. All right, so we're gonna take a break here. We're gonna cut this video off. We're gonna start a new video later on. But here, we're gonna talk about acids. We're gonna get into uh, different types of acids. Did you know there are different types? There are, we can categorize them in different ways. So we're gonna get into that. Uh, that's all for the next video. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Please come back, tune in again. Same bat channel, same bat place, same bat person. So on that note, I will say adios and I will see you guys in the next video. Everybody have a great day. Enjoy yourself. Be safe. Uh, say hello to somebody. It brightens their day. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.